you got a child who plays football, I'm pretty sure you want him to have the best equipment possible. Being that the good parents, hopefully that you are, you're going to give them that equipment. People that tend to use older football equipment tend to suffer more injuries. As a former football player, I can attest to that. My freshman year, when I played football, I was given the Riddell Revolution helmet. It's an older helmet. Uh, it was beat up. I suffered three concussions in that helmet. My senior year, I was given a newer helmet, Riddell Revolution Revo Speed Helmet. I suffered the same blows to the head, and I was not concussed. Which brings me to my topic. I will be talking about how football equipment has evolved and has improved from top to bottom. Let's begin with headgear. When playing football, head injuries are the, most, are the biggest risk when playing. When people run at full speed, injuries are inevitable. Leather helmets were the first type of helmets designed when, for playing football. By the 1950s, leather helmets were phased out of the organized football leagues across America. Helmets have greatly evolved since then, though. The goal of helmets like the Revo Speed Flex is to fully integrate components and state-of-the-art protection. According to Peter Robinson of, Bloom, of Bloomberg.com, the Revo Speed Flex has the, highest, has the highest rating for a football helmet. Now that we have talked about the head, let's move on to another part of the body, the shoulders. By the end of the 1890s, players added homemade materials to their uniforms for padding for their shoulders. These materials consisted of cotton and canvas. In 1901, the first rigid shoulder pads were designed. Shoulder pads today are made of plastic and synthetic material, which make them lighter and stronger. An example of this would be the Zenith X-Flexion shoulder pads. They, util they utilize multi-stage compression to attenuate impact energy, and the design is to minimize movement. With that being said, I'm going to move on to another part of the body, which I think is becoming more and more important in today's game. Nowadays, we're seeing more and more of our star athletes going down with season-ending injuries to their legs. In my opinion, the legs are the most, the second most important to you, well, first your head, second most important part of your body when playing football because you can't go anywhere without your legs. Football pants in the 1890s were made of tough canvas material. Those pants fit looser and were not as comfortable as the ones today. Those pants were designed with interior padding that you put your pads in, you know, you had your hip, your thigh, your knee, and your tailbone pads. In today's new age of pants, they are made out of nylon material, which make them more comfortable, and they fit tighter and easier, and they're easier to move in. Now the padding is now built into the pads, into the pants, and they're just easier to deal with. Or if you're like me, I used to wear a girdle, and I'm not talking about what women wear, but I'm talking about uh, compression pants that have padding within them. In conclusion. With more and more research to football, to football equipment, player safety will only improve. I'm not saying that injuries are going to go away, but the game of football will definitely be a safer game. 